Hello, everybody. I'm Haley. And I'm Kim. And this is the Able Voice Debrief. Welcome to another episode. Today we're talking all about the episode one of season two with Daria. And the theme was all about making music that makes a difference. And it was such a special conversation. Um, Mm -hmm. And we are excited to dive in and talk about this in great detail because I know we both were significantly impacted after that conversation. I think that's where this idea for a debrief came after the recording. I think so too. I think it was, I mean, I've, I've listened to the episode a few times now just because it's such an impactful one and we talked about so many things within it. Um, and I remember us sitting there after finishing recording it with um, Daria and just having so much more that we could say or we could talk about. And I think like, I think you're right. That's where this idea of continuing the conversation and, and getting a second to take a step back and, and dig in a little bit deeper came from. So I'm excited. Yeah. <laughs> I'm super excited. We have all of, we, we do this all the time, just between mm-hmm. you and I after each episode, because we have had some incredible guests on the show and yeah. felt like there needed to be a space where we could just talk, um, you know, candidly about those episodes and what mm-hmm. happened. And um, we felt it was, it was enough for us to share with other people I feel like some valuable things. There are a lot of things that need processing after listening to some of these episodes. Definitely. And we value um, feedback from our audience. And so we wanted to make something that was a little bit more casual where you can mm-hmm. join in a conversation. Um, if you're on YouTube or if you're listening yeah. to this from your podcast app, please let us know um, where you're listening from and add some comments underneath the video or the yeah. recording um, from wherever you are in the world. We want to hear from you and what your thoughts were after listening to this first episode of Woo! season two. <laughs> yeah. <sighs> I don't even know where to start. Right off the bat, I think just Daria's presence mm. was such a beautiful, genuine light of energy yeah. and um, her story was so powerful and moving. Mm-hmm. Well, and, and her story as a whole was made up of so many little stories. And I think that's what makes it so, that's what's really resonating with me. And um, this larger idea of how much each of our journeys and each of our lives are made up of these stories that create our unique voices and, and who we are, which is a theme that Daria really focuses on in, in everything that she shared with us and, and that she does. So, um yeah, it was a really beautiful conversation that shed light on um, each individual's voices and, like I said, was made up of those little stories that kind of give us a little bit more of that insider look at what's actually going on here. Yeah, and and, and so creative, so mm-hmm. um, inventive in, in the way that she's going about her life, just yeah. so um, in tune with the experience of now and -hmm. the experience of uh, being in that moment with somebody and making sure that um, no matter who it is that she comes in contact with, uh, whether she knows it or not, she's aware or knows how um, she's doing this or not. She is aware of the fact that she is making an impact on that person's Mm -hmm. life. Yeah. Um, Imparting memory into whatever activity it is that they're doing. Yeah, and that they're making a lasting impact on her as well. I think that's something that's even so much deeper. We often think about what we're putting into the world and <clears throat> the impact we're having on others, which um, sometimes we don't we don't think of it that. And I think um, 
Daria mentioned that in her episode too of, of not knowing how much we're actually impacting people in a positive light. Um, but also, yeah, that, that reverse of taking what we're learning from other people and letting it resonate with us and um, yeah. carrying it with us in our story and informing the way that we walk through the world, I think is really important and really special. Yeah, so very special. We, I mean, we exist in this world with other people. And so mm -hmm. I think the the trajectory of our lives is really, <clears throat> excuse me, it's really, you know, influenced by the way that we are impacted by others and yeah. the way that we um, impact others. And there's just this cycle of continual, continual connection. And I feel like um, sometimes we can forget that and we can forget that piece and, and forget to reflect on that um, and how how much that actually means. Um, but for me, I know like paying it forward and, and I understand where she was coming from and in, in, in wanting to go back and thank certain people in her life who made yeah. impacts on her um, in, in a positive way. And, you know, it, it's, it's, it's so heartwarming because I can think of uh, a few people in my story who have significantly influenced me and the way yeah. that I'm able to now do the things that I'm able to do and um, the path that I chose for myself, I probably wouldn't have if I didn't have those people in my life. Totally. Uh, yeah. That's something that really resonates deeply with me is just like... <clears throat> the what ifs, and I think we all do this, like, who would I have been if I didn't meet that person, if I didn't um, have that experience, if I didn't have that struggle, which is another piece that we talked about in the episode two of becoming who we are or, or adding to our journey um, because of the challenging things that we experience. And yeah, it's a really interesting concept. Yeah, I, I, I really wanted to just clarify that a bit more because I know it could be... Um, it can be misconstrued in, in some instances whereby I'm not in, in the story that I tell about the butterfly, <laughs> I'm not saying that, you know, um, struggle is easy. I'm not saying that struggle is absolutely necessary and that you should live in a constant state of struggle. If you're in a situation where you feel like you're struggling, you, you, you need support in order to get through um, difficult times in your life. Mm -hmm. But there are certain um, there are certain struggles or certain uh, levels of discomfort that we have to um, endure in order to get to a place of beauty and, and grow through. Um, yeah. And that is is something that I I always carry with me and something that you know Daria really resonated in this episode um, in multiple instances throughout our conversation together. And I, I think it's really beautiful to recognize that something beautiful can come yeah. out of struggle. And I think that's the important message there is to know that if you are somebody that's struggling right now, mm -hmm. you have the potential to become something beautiful and flourish and thrive and live your best yes. uh, life in, in, in the best form of energy and essence of who you are inside. Um, yeah. It can come to fruition. Absolutely. Yeah. And like you said, it's not to take away from from that struggle and from that journey, that um, journey there, because that is those are absolutely dark, challenging moments. And it sucks to be in those places. Mm -hmm. um, but to, yeah, your point of there can be beauty out of the struggle. Um, and one one element that I think is even um, is also very empowering or very motivating for me there is to be able to share that story and that struggle and that might not come easily to everyone and, and sometimes we need that distance and I think Daria mentions it in the episode of saying like I I didn't feel comfortable in sharing my struggles and so I would only tell the positive positive. and I think so many of us do that and we downplay the struggle and we say I went through this really hard time but look at everything that I've accomplished or look at what came out of it and super powerful things but let's not forget about the struggle and everything that happened in, in that time. And I think there's such a, a braveness and vulnerability when people um, dig into that because it shows the impact, right? It shows that journey as opposed to um, if someone is in that dark place and isn't quite able to see what can come out of it. Sometimes it resonates more with us when we're like, oh, 
I relate to where they were at. That's where I'm at now. Yeah, it's an important piece in your story. Yeah. That can be difficult to uh, relive through memories. It can be difficult to mm-hmm. bring up when you are talking to other people about that particular time in life. And so, um, you know, I I know that you've seen Frozen 2. <laughs> Yes, I have. <laughs> We've had so many conversations about that. <laughs> but um, Frozen 2, I like it just came to my my thought that this this um, instance of when Anna was really in that dark place and mm-hmm. you know, she there's a song called The Next Right Thing. I think it's called The Next Right Thing. I think so. Um and that's that's something that's actually been popping up in my life. <laughs> For the past mm. few years, I read a book that was called uh, The Next Right Thing. Mm. And I think it was by Emily Freeman. And um, I think I could be wrong. <laughs> Don't quote me. <laughs> but uh, the, that, that message has been popping up for me so often. And it's like, you know, all we have to do, all we're responsible for, all we can do mm. in, in any time of struggle, in any good time even, is just to simply do the next right thing. And maybe that means getting up. Maybe yeah. that means um, having a glass of water. Maybe that means brushing your teeth, <laughs> you know? Maybe yeah. that means opening a window. Um, all we can do is the next right thing. And mm-hmm. I feel like that is something tangible that people can hold on to in um, times when they are struggling in order to to make tangible steps to get through that um as well as things like therapy and yeah. um having support systems for you in place i think that's a really important part of healing and growth is definitely um reaching out reaching out for support um mm-hmm. and when you get to that place where you feel like you're ready to share your story yeah there are going to be people who listen and i felt so incredibly touched when Daria kept saying, thank you for listening. Thank you for listening. I know what it feels like to be heard. Mm -hmm. And so that touched me Me so incredibly much that it meant that much to her that we were simply listening Mm -hmm. to her story. Yeah. It it seems like such a simple act, but it, it really does have that deeper impact. And I felt that same way when she was thanking us. It's it's kind of that reminder of like, oh, right, giving our undivided attention to really hear what someone is saying, um, especially for topics or for people who maybe aren't heard as frequently or um, are feeling unheard or just haven't had a chance to really share their voice. It, mm-hmm. it really, it deepens the connection and it can have such a, um, a meaningful impact as well. Yeah. Yeah. And I wonder how many um, opportunities we are really giving to one another in life to Mm -hmm. be even heard. In in just like our social circles, even like outside of therapy space, how 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 are we doing that for our friends? Are we providing brave safe spaces for them to Mm. really um, share with us and to feel heard and feel validated in? the things that they're going through are we checking in on people yeah Yeah. simple things like that and um I also want to talk about there was a a moment at at the beginning of the episode where Daria talks about her um law child who's multiple disabled and you know simply treating somebody like they are 100% whole human being no matter what they're going through that was so beautiful. Um, she said, I wrote it down. I wrote it down too. <laughs> I'm so glad. <laughs> her, like she was a hundred percent human being with a different set of human being skills. Yes. Like Amazing. Like how can you qu- like quantify that any better for anyone? I've been ruminating on that a lot recently and I'm so glad you brought it up because what a concept. <laughs> what a concept of treating someone like a person who has a different set of human skills. They're like, and and I think that goes for like you said in in this particular context. She was speaking um, of someone who had um, special needs, but I think that goes for everyone. Like we all have different abilities and different skills, and that's what makes it so cool and so special. Yes. Yeah. Yes. 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 Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah. I mean, it, it, it doesn't sound like much. Like, it shouldn't be this much of a revelation. I, I feel like it, it's so backwards that we have to make this a, a point. Mm-hmm. That we we all are um, we we all are worthy is another thing that yeah you we are so worthy everyone is worthy whatever language you speak is worthy whatever um, voice you have when you're singing is worthy whatever yeah. um, whatever your abilities are you are worthy and you are a hundred percent whole human being that deserves respect love attention all of the things i just want to go and shout that from the rooftops right now (laughs) man (gasps) Ah! (laughs) advocates for that yeah absolutely well you're right like people people. (laughs) it seems so silly to say it does but it's so um i think what's exciting for me is that it gives a little bit more of that language um because i feel like when i talk to you or when i talk to other people in my life who i'm on similar wavelengths with and who really um have similar values it, it it's not a conversation that really comes up because it's just the way that we treat people and we just yeah. engage that way um but in having conversations with other people it kind of gives a different framework and it, it it seems yeah it seems a little bit silly but and very fundamental yeah. because it is <laughs> it is it's it awesome. is and and to think of like if we didn't if we didn't do that which we see unfortunately within our society mm-hmm. um we miss out on so many things that somebody yeah. can do. and that was another powerful uh thing that daria said you know she goes into communities and she makes a point to learn more about them and to, to yeah. uplift them and, and validate their um their native experiences um because yeah there are people in the world who are trying to diminish that. And so they're scared to use their own voice Mm -hmm. and goes into these places and, you know, really lives by the saying that, you know, you are special. You are you and who knows what you can do. Yeah. Be you. But isn't that just so much more exciting too? That like that whole way of living that whole mantra that whole outlook she really shapes what she does and it's so evident in everything that she does in her work within like you said engaging within those communities wanting to hear their languages and their voices and their instruments like she's not going in and trying to say well this is how you play a western instrument or this is how you how i do the things which also is great and impactful of, of bringing that education there as well but she's saying teach me what you do because that's really cool and I think that's so impactful and special. Um, and it just opens the door so much more because when those those kids that she's working with feel excited and empowered, well, then they get to be their authentic selves. They don't have to hide and say, well, actually, I, I, I speak this language instead of my native tongue um, and, and hiding those things that they're ashamed of because someone else made them feel that way. Exactly. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. It, it's, it's so special um, when you meet people who yeah. are on that same wavelength. And yeah. I just want to hold on to those people and like latch on and make them a part of my community because I feel like <clears throat> there's just, there's so much negative <laughs> that I've seen in the world, yeah. especially going through this pandemic. There have been so many things that I just have to avoid in yeah. spaces like social media. And when I find somebody like Daria, who is such a light mm-hmm. um, and a beacon in this world, and, and you know, I'm not even sure if she realizes that. <laughs> well, I, I think she's think just so authentic in who she is. I think that's just. <laughs> yeah. I, I, and like such a blessing it's been to, to yeah. even meet her and come across her page. Um, and I think that that was fate in itself is the fact that we found each other. I think that positive mm-hmm. light energy finds its way to one yeah. another. Connects. Yeah. yeah, I think that's why we are so close and we've found our way together um, doing so many incredible things for the yeah. world. And then all of the people that 
we have on our podcast and will have on our podcast this season. Um, I think that's why we're so excited to continue yes. chatting along this line. Um, yeah. Is there anything that you took away from this episode that really, really stood out for you? Um, maybe one of her stories or just a takeaway that you had after? I had so many. And I'm like looking at some notes that I scribbled down here as I was listening to the episode because I just want to latch on to so much of what um, Daria shared with us, but also just the natural conversations. Um, two, two things that I'll share right now. The first was... The story of the little girl, um, so everyone wanting to to squeegee the the windshield wipers to get um, a little bit of income um, and everyone doing it that same way. And then there's this little girl who, instead of taking that approach, um, invited her to listen to some music. Roll down your window and I'll play you a song. And that's just so stunning to me because one, yeah, please play me a song that sounds incredible and and so authentic and so precious. But two, it had me thinking outside of the realms of that story and and what we discussed in the episode, but what a a shift in approach, what a shift in a way um, that she's walking through the world and saying, I want to share this with you. Um, From what I gathered in the story, it was less about getting something in return. It was more about, I want to share this music with you. And of course that made (laughs) I want to give more but um yeah just that shift of wanting to give and to put things into the world and it's just um yeah it's stunning and I think it really reminds me to shift my focus of like okay if something's not working how can I give light into the world or how can I give something um and then maybe maybe the universe will give me back what I need yeah I I love that story as well um because it then influenced a, a significant change in Daria's yeah. path. But also, what a way, like you said, for that little girl to go about um, providing for herself and, and perhaps even her family. Yeah. And to think of her outside of a, a car um, window, just offering up her voice. So as, nice. As, it, it's, it's, it makes me think, back to like um our musical roots of like this is what music is it's an invitation for others to join us Mm -hmm. without all of the bells and whistles without you know a particular standard of proficiency it's just like this is who i am this is what i'm offering to you um and i'm not particularly asking them (laughs) for anything in return yet or at all really in that moment she wasn't she was just offering something that she was able to 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 do from her skill set from her um range of ability yes from her human being skills exactly and i think that's just so authentic so beautiful yeah and could you imagine if like the world we just didn't care about a standard if we just used our abilities yeah because that's what we had to work with like how many people are out of tune with that Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah i mean that leads me actually to my other point of what really resonated with me it's um i scribbled down a paraphrased quote of something daria said Mm -hmm. because i have to go back and listen to it but essentially just reiterating like your voice matters not because it's the best voice in the world but because it's yours it's your voice and that's what makes you you and that's what makes this world a a unique and interesting place to be and I just find that so fundamental but so empowering and important um yeah it's able (laughs) it's an able voice it is uh, like obviously resonates with us and the reason yeah. that we're creating this podcast so much. We believe that all voices are important, um, are unique and should be heard. Um, and so, yeah, that that that's that whole story is just so powerful. And um, yeah. all of all of the little stories that came in to this episode were really, uh, they were just they were just so lovely. Yeah. So lovely. So lovely. <laughs> <laughs> I have a couple um, yeah. 
uh, of stories that actually kind of connect with um, some of the ones that you said, Kim. Mm. One was the, um, the, the the story that came after the one with the little girl. Rodaria said she was inspired by that little girl to start um, incorporating recycled instruments into yes. her um, lesson. And um, she talked about um, using things like uh, plastic bottles and, and bags and all of these kinds of things mm -hmm. that, um, you know, could be reused. And you actually said something interesting. <laughs> you <laughs> Like that, that's so incredible. Not only are you know, you doing something really great for the environment, but mm -hmm. also in terms of um, uh, accessibility and sensory stimulation for somebody who, um, you know, might have an aversion to, to picking up an instrument or, uh, uh, you know, something that we would bring into session that exist in the Western world as instruments. Um, it might be difficult for them because it's a foreign object. Yeah. Whereas if we're bringing in something that they've seen in their everyday life, such as a, a paper bag or a pizza box or a, a, a water bottle, like those are some things that are tangible that already exist in the world. They're familiar. That would ease that transition into um, engaging in a musical experience with instruments. Mm -hmm. So I really, I really loved that because in that moment, I hadn't thought of that connection <laughs> of like, yeah. wow, you're right. Like, how foreign must it be for us to bring in like a, a, a maraca that's like manufactured in yeah. who knows where, um, little egg shakers that, um, you know, these are not things that you would come across in your everyday life. And no. so yeah you should be a little wary of what it is um I never thought of that so mm, yeah yeah I think it's really interesting because I it's something that I pay attention to um maybe not as much as I should because we get into our routines and these are the tools that we have and I have my maracas and my shakers and <laughs> all the things that I do um but it comes from the experience I have working with some individuals who are like I don't want that and mm -hmm. and needing to learn like oh, shoot, that, that texture feels awful for you. You hate that. Yeah. I'm not going to force you to, <laughs> to do that. But yeah, like with Daria, with her bringing in um, these materials of things that people can create instruments with, like it just opens the door so much more. Yeah, you can say, hey, bring in your um, a, a favorite piece of fabric or bring in mm -hmm. um, a water bottle from home and then they can yeah. feel around for something that... Uh, that feels a little bit, I think the word you used was familiar in, yeah. in the episode too. And I think that's so important of getting to share things like, again, us not just imposing, these are the things we have, um, which can sometimes be great, obviously. Um, but also having that, that dialogue to say like, what do you need? What's good for you? Let's be creative. Let's yeah. have some fun. Yeah. Maybe this is a way, like this is a transition step. This is a way to meet somebody where they are which is what therapy is all about, right? Yeah. <laughs> and so, um, yeah, I just I just found that really beautiful and something mm -hmm. that I'm going to keep in mind going forward awesome. as well. Um, and then the second thing that came out of this episode for me that really connected was when we talked about creating ocean drums with mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, Daria told a story about an, an older adult gentleman who was really fixated on, on making it perfect for his granddaughter. And so for in that instance, Daria realized, you know, it's not about creating something that's perfect. It was about mm -hmm. creating something that genuinely authentically came from that person to give to another person that they cared so deeply for. Yeah. Um, and that interaction is, is so beautiful at its foundation because yeah. You know, that's, that's again, like we said at the beginning of this conversation, that's all we're here for is to create connections with other people. Mm -hmm. And obviously that, that, that man had a very strong connection with his granddaughter. And, and um, you know, at that stage in life, there are certain abilities that look different for you and you have to navigate that shift and what 
you are able to do for mm-hmm. others. And so this was something that empowered um, yeah. that gentleman and, and made him feel like, you know, I'm doing something meaningful yeah. for somebody that I care for. Yeah. How, how beautiful is that to be able to provide that space where, like you said, there, there was that, that autonomy, that mastery of something that they were able to give that they made with their own hands to someone that they love. Like, how beautiful is that? I I, I love that. Um, I love that music, um, and musical intervention, musical activity. Mm-hmm. can do that because it not only provides an experience but it, it provides a uh, memory it provides mm-hmm. um, a you know that tangible product it, it it provides connection um there's so many words that i could use. yeah <laughs> and it, it, it's beautiful whether that's within a therapy setting or um you know an education <laughs> setting or um a performance setting even there's so much give and take between any kind of musical exchange mm-hmm. um, and I think that as music therapists we tap into that so often and yeah. it, it just is part of the experience of being yeah. within music therapy and so it's so special to hear that other settings are starting to embrace what that could look like yeah. especially during a time like now, <laughs> super creative um, and connect mm-hmm. in a different way. Absolutely, definitely. I think that's kind of. Um, it, that's something also that's really wonderful about the timing of this episode. Uh, I think we reference it in the episode as well. But in this time where we are so. So many of us are working um, in telehealth sessions or perhaps in sessions where we can't bring everything that we normally would in. Um, We have to find a little bit of extra creativity, which um, I know myself I struggled with and continue to struggle with. And many people I've spoken to, again, in this time where our creativity is being so challenged and we're already feeling so tired um, to have some of these resources that Daria shared with us. it, it, it excites me. It illuminates me a little bit. Right. We encourage you so much to go and check out Daria's um, yes. Instagram page. I think she has a Facebook page as well, but also her YouTube, um, the Music Museum Online. Um, we'll link everything in the show notes underneath your podcast mm-hmm. episode. So if you want to listen to our podcast episode, we'll link it below. Um, it's a really great episode. It is. It's such a wonder. If you can't tell. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like we could talk for like three more hours about it. So (laughs) we had such a wonderful conversation and we want to hear from you. Yeah. Yeah. So go take a listen um, and then come back here and join us in the conversation. Head over to um, our Instagram pages. If you want to stay connected, you can find me at Kimberly dot no Kimberly MTA dot Kimberly. There it is. (laughs) Woo. And at mta.kimberly and Haley. You can find me at MTA Haley uh, and uh, www.mtahaley.com. Um, yeah, I'm on Facebook and Instagram. <laughs> no Twitter, but no Twitter. Uh, yeah, not not yet. I don't think. But yeah, you can find us any of those ways. All of our information is always in the descriptions. Always. So come and chat with us. We're always open for conversation. And yeah. cheers to season two. Cheers to season two. With our tea. <laughs> tea and water. <laughs>